This slide shows uh, a scene probably most of you are familiar with. It's a funeral. They're carrying the casket to the grave. Everybody's in black. They're kind of sad. Most people there are either thinking about death or if they're believers, they're thinking about heaven. Either their loved one is going or they're reminded they're headed there. Let me read to a funeral that I did recently for a member of the House of Representatives of uh, a state where I was pastoring. And this is what I wrote um, in the funeral. Just to explain to you what heaven's like. Jesus visited Kalamazoo on Sunday, November 6, to meet another of his precious children. Just as the dark, cold river of death began to flow and the valley of death's shadow began to creak open, the only one who ever defeated death and destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil, extended his arms toward David. It was about 5.45 a.m. And all of a sudden, David was acutely aware of hearing a voice. And as he listened, he realized it was a voice he knew so well. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So to that voice of his good shepherd, David looked up on Sunday for what would be the greatest day of his life. David heard the voice of Jesus coming to take him to heaven. He saw Jesus standing there, the one crushed for his iniquities. And then he looked at his face, the one who was bruised for his transgressions. And he saw those hands reaching out to him, pierced for his sins on the cross, those nail scarred hands reached out for his, and from that hospital bed, David reached up toward Jesus. While his family were only watching that tired and worn out body fall silent, David had already firmly grasped those hands of Jesus. He had slipped quietly out of bed and was following Jesus to the place he had prepared for him in his father's house in heaven. So, as we gather at funerals on that remembering that special day appointed for David, Jesus Christ had left heaven and arrived at David's bedside just as the valley of death's shadow drew near. In that instant, David was glorified. He looked in Christ's likeness. He stepped into a life that was endless because of God's amazing grace. And for the first time in months, he was unencumbered by a dying body. He was clothed with endless life as he went from that room arm in arm with Jesus. As the tears flowed in that hospital room, David could already see the celestial city gleaming before him. Jesus whispered that his room in his father's house was finally finished and he was going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On Sunday, when his fragile life ended, David came before the God of the universe. Now think of what that moment was like. What the family saw is what you see in that slide. That's, that's the coffin with all those flowers on it in that dugout hole in the ground. But as we learned in our lesson about 14 classes ago, in Revelation 3.5, we come to heaven led by the nail-scarred hand of Jesus to meet our Heavenly Father because Jesus paid for us and he wants to present us before God as a miracle of grace. Listen for a moment what it says in Revelation 3, 5. Jesus said, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Now pause. Think of every believer you've ever known who has already died. Think of yourself. If someday you're going to be laying in a hospital bed, watching the monitor and seeing people whispering and knowing that your time is getting near. This is what happens next. It's the most amazing thing to think about. Just before 6 a.m., as David died on earth, Jesus took him by the hand and led him past the marshaled ranks of angels, up the center boulevard to glory, past the cherubim, past the flaming seraphim, up in front of the very throne of God himself. And David heard the Lord Jesus call him by name as he presented him in person to God 
as his beloved child. Then he heard from God the Father say, bring the best robe, put it on him. Think of it, a robe of white, bright as the day, pure as light. When the Lord Jesus was transfigured on the mount in Matthew 17, something happened not only to his skin, something happened to his clothes. His face and his clothes glowed white as light. What a reward for all of us who have been completely forgiven to have a robe like that draped around our shoulders, to be invited to walk in the shining ways of glory, to join the saints of all the ages home at last with our Creator and our Father. I told you in one of the earlier classes that I was going to share with you one of the earliest verses I remember memorizing. It's in the book of Psalms, and it's so much about heaven. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 11. It says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I remember memorizing that verse, and the more I think about it, it describes this moment. We are going to spend eternity following the one who made us, who loved us, who bought us, who's prepared a place for us. And what he says, three things about him. He wants to guide us. He'll show us the path of life. Not only the path of life here on earth, but the path of life to endless life in heaven. 